Welcome to my study notebook. I'm Loom Rahmet. I'm a recent graduate student who did PhD in chemical engineering from Texas A&M University. And today I'm going to talk about some of the common mistakes that we usually see in SOP writing. And I'm basing this comments uh, based on the reviews that I've done in my study notebook for SOPs. So what are the common mistakes that we usually see? One of the major mistakes that I have seen in almost all of the SOPs is that students do not emphasize enough on writing an inspiring or compelling introduction. And I tell it to every student who has submitted an SOP for review is that you have to put an extra effort into writing the introduction to be a motivating story that tells a story of how you became interested in higher studies. And why it's very important? Because this is the part that is going to distinguish you from other applicants in the eyes of the reviewer. They want something special or something that tells an authentic story. So try to be genuine when writing an introduction and avoid sob stories because they do not work all the time. Rather, I would suggest that you focus on your strength and abilities that relates you to your research. Um, also read carefully to see that if, if it flows with the content and the rest of the body of the SOP. So what happens for most of the students is that after writing the SOP, they write the introduction in the last and then they do not have enough time to make a connection. So oftentimes it seems like the introduction and the rest of the body is separate. It doesn't make a flow. So in that case, the SOP is weaker. So my suggestion would be read several times, try to make a connection to the introduction and obviously spend a lot of time on writing or thinking about what you're going to write in the introduction. Another major um, um, error that I have seen is that not focusing on your research or relevant skill sets. So oftentimes people just write about their skill sets, what they have done, but then they forget to make a connection to the research that they are focusing on. So while writing an SOP for a university, you need to see what research is being done on that university and then try to relate to your past experience to that research so that the reviewer committee can um, think of you as an ideal candidate. So that's one part that you should focus on the research or relevant skill sets. Another mistake that I see that people try to make uh, the sentences unnecessarily large and complex because many times people think that if you use a um, simpler sentence it doesn't look good but uh, this is not true as long as you can convey your message to the reviewer comedy it's good enough and one major mistake that people do is that while trying to make the sentences complex they uh, do not or, or they are not able to convey the message they want to say so the sentence cr structure becomes complex and then uh, the reviewer does not understand what they're trying to say in that case the SOP becomes very weak so unless you're very comfortable about writing a complex sentence structure or using uh, the GRE words then avoid doing that try to use simpler sentences uh, another common mistake is that not showing that you have done enough research on the university you are applying for. So sometimes people just say that I am interested in your university because you have very good quality faculty, good research going on and making some uh, vague general statement like that. And that actually uh, makes your SOP weaker because it shows that you haven't done enough work. Uh, to study or research on their website and then uh, in terms of taking students they would want someone who goes very well with their core value who is genuinely interested about their research so that's one a major mistake that you can do is that not doing enough research on the university website or what work they're doing on also one common mistake that everybody does almost everybody and that is like not stating how you can contribute to the university's research so in the contribution section, often people say that, okay, this is why I want to do the higher studies. And in that section, uh, most people would say that um, I want to do this study because it will help me uh, build up my career, uh, which is true and you should obviously tell that. But at the same time, you should also make a point to remind the universities why they need you as an applicant. Because they, you are going to be able to contribute with your skill sets, you're going to help their research to grow up, and then you ha you're going to help uh, develop their laboratories or research or whatever relevant fields. And there's always a cost-benefit analysis. They are going to take a candidate who's going to help them. It's not only one way around. So you have to remind them. And for this, you don't need to write a whole lot of things. In the conclusion, just in one line, try to remind that how you can contribute with your skill sets and then you can make yourself stand out as an applicant. 
And finally, another common mistake is not writing a compelling conclusion that reminds them of your strength. So I just told you like in the conclusion, you need to remind them that uh, why they need you as an applicant. And oftentimes people do not work as hard as they should on the conclusion. And remember that in the SOP, uh, the introduction and conclusion both are very important because oftentimes the reviewer wouldn't read the complete SOP because they're getting hundreds of applications. They might just look into the introduction and conclusion and try to get a guess of what you have been trying to say. So if you miss the important points in the conclusion, then the reviewer committee might not know about it. So give your time on writing the introduction and conclusion of the SOP. So based on the common mistakes that I have seen so far, um, here are some of my tips on how you can do better. So first of all, be original. Don't try to steal stories. Oftentimes we do is that we take a sample and then try to mimic that story. But that is not your story. And if it's not your story, then your SOP wouldn't be authentic. It wouldn't be as interesting. So try to brainstorm that what aspect of your life brought you to the decision of doing a higher study and try to reflect that in your introduction. Also, show your passion for the topic. Uh, so sometimes I see that people make it vaguely general, like I want to do study in civil engineering and so forth, and then not talk about the specific branches. And then oftentimes there's also people who want to cover everything. They're going to talk that I want to talk about, uh, I want to do research on this topic and this topic and that topic. And that also have a negative impression in the sense that you do not have any focus. So my suggestion would be to uh, read more about the research that that specific university is doing and then choose a few topics that you think that you might like and then focus on them. And that shows that you are an applica uh, applicant that is relevant to them and who has also done research on their website. And at the same time, it shows that you are passionate about your topic. So do some research before you write your SAP. And also, at the same time, do your research on the university's website, mention their special features, such as what research they're doing, what labs they have, and even some other unique features, such as core values. So if you can show something that you have gone through their website, you know about their um, overall objectives and the mission statement or anything else, um, then they will be more interested in taking you because they are not going to take an applicant with, who is not interested in the university itself. Another thing is that uh, don't forget to mention your soft skills. Oftentimes we think that it's not important, but actually it is. Uh, if you can mention some of your leadership qualities or uh, the extracurricular activities that you have taken part in, it shows that you are good uh, for working in team as well as you have good leadership quality. And oftentimes in research you have to interact with people and work in group. So that's a quality that is definitely going to make you uh, look special in comparison to another candidate who doesn't have these qualities. So try to mention the soft skills. Um, you don't need to focus a lot on that, but try to describe some of them. Uh, in terms of sentence construct, I suggested earlier to use simpler sentences because they help you convey your message uh, quickly. Uh, but if you are um, uh, comfortable with uh, writing complex sentences, that, then you might go for it, but still revise it to see that if it makes sense to other people or not. One other thing that I suggest everyone is to read the document several times to see if the sentences make sense or if the paragraphs are flowing together. Because oftentimes uh, the paragraphs are written separately and when you read them, it seems like there's no connection and it makes the SOP look weaker. So after writing the SOP, try to make a connection and f so that the document flows and in order to ensure that, you need to read it several times. Uh, check for grammar and spelling error because nothing irritates people more than a spelling error. And it shows that you haven't put enough time into writing SOP. So the reviewers also think that they shouldn't give enough time on your application. So be very careful about grammar and spelling error before sending out the SOP. And finally, one tip that's common for everyone, that is to get your SOP reviewed by several other people because that, that way you will be able to get a uh, different perspective and different review on your documents and it will obviously help you. So these are the tips to do better and I hope that they will help you out. Um, so best of luck with writing SOP in, uh, for the graduate application and if you need anything or have further questions, uh, the email address is given below. Thank you.